is going to be an interesting okay. one. Okay. Vigil is going to be our final ban. I talked earlier about how all these maps were incredibly roam heavy, and this one, definitely one of them. Vigil, the operator you're going to rely on quite often to fulfill that role, so that's going to cause at least one player to go for a bit of a swap out here. Very interesting stuff. We'll have to see what Mirage could possibly slot in if they even had a strat built around that in the first place. But we will have to see. Either way, though, Parabellum will be starting out on the favored side here, at least with recent percentages coming into play for Bank. And, well, the lineup is looking pretty spot on. Maverick, Ace, and Thermite making sure to triple up on that hard breach, but we could see one of these things switched out. They've got really everything necessary, though, to take on any site across the board. So don't have to worry too much for the PB side. As for Mirage. They'll be headed to staff room in open area initially, which is that uh, kind of strange bomb site. Kind of a difficult one to win, but very interesting across the board in comparison to the other sites on bank, simply because of the ways that you can transition out of the site. Obviously giving Mirage a little bit more freedom to play the full breadth of this map. Maybe see what some of the usual opening strategies that we'll see from Parabellum are going to look like as well by having that further exposed position when compared to what will more than likely follow this roundup, which would probably end up being a basement play. That's where we've been seeing a lot of success for defenders. Easiest to maintain your positions despite the changes that were made to it. So once again, that will end up being a mainstay. But some teams having some mixed results with that. So not always falling back to it pretty much immediately there. Sometimes a bit more of a mixed bag. So we'll see how Mirage specifically is going to try and revolve around that as we get deeper and deeper into this half. Another interesting pick that I'm sure you guys noticed already is going to be Nyx on the Capcan here. Capcan has been seeing more and more of him pop in and out of play, specifically inside of our North American League here. So once again, he's going to be shot for the first round as Mirage will be trying to slow down those faster plays that we would sometimes see out of teams like Parabellum. Yeah, Parabellum is a perfect counter for this op right here. Uh, you know, bringing this on the board is going to make it where Parabellum has to check all these door frames. We're all very used to operating around these EDDs, but that means they're also going to have to slow down their game plans. A highlight of Parabellum is the fact that they like to execute as soon as they are ready. We can see an execute at a minute 45. You really never know with these guys. If they have the proper position, they're going to go for it. And speaking of proper position, Spirits might have loading very early here. The castle currently working the white stairwell. Just barricade his way in here. Spirit's not going to hear too much. Doesn't even spray the other door. Had an opportunity there for just a second, but the audio probably not ringing true. So he'll choose to instead Track his feet, get some information for his team, and play this one out slow. It's possible again we have another player position close to the first floor position, but it's not going to be the case this time around. As you can see, Mirage have quite the matrix set up specifically around this first floor main stair landing here, trying to prevent all of that access. While at the same time, Parabellum is starting to take it away, specifically up here on the second floor here, as you're starting to see their sledge, currently played by Eska, doing all the work, clearing things out, and specifically disallowing for this extended presence you're seeing inside of areas like Tellers, as well as Archives there, from having as much confidence when the execute comes in. It'll be a huge tool for Mirage if they're allowed to keep it, so Parabellum Let's try and knock those players out of here inside of the second minute of the round. And continue to abuse that vertical control as well as shut down the exit points. A lot of these different spaces. Kool-Aid might have a play here, has a ping, finds the castle reloading inside of E2. Has a possibility of another one pushing up, but the bolts will force him back. Spears has also got the cross here as well. Can see some major plays from Dream. He's in the power position right now, but has he been droned? He has not. Kool-Aid will get caught off guard. As he'll be able to hold on to lobby for a spell here. Moves his way into E2. Spirit still with his cross as well, so could still be able to bag and tag him, especially as Nyx actually moves in. They have no idea where Spirits is currently. This is going to continue to be locked in a feud for a time. Solid trade coming out there once again from the squad on the inside of the Archives position. Nyx is going to be able to find another one from just behind the beepers. Knocks out Penguin. Parabellum had a great start with the opening kill against Loading, but now are going to be unable to translate that into a second here once again, part due to the fact that they had trouble clearing out players like this. Dream now going to rotate upstairs, I believe, they're going to be able to find Spirits and knock him out. Another great positioning from him, and he's going to get a third one. We were talking about the impact we might see from Dream earlier, and it's going to be immediately apparent as he gets a quad off the rip in the very first round. I'll clap for that. I'll clap for that right there. That's a dream clap if I have ever seen one, folks, as he shows up big. Four kills for him inside of the first round, letting Parabellum know this is not going to be as easy as you initially thought. I really like what Parabellum was doing initially, speaking of which, which was take that top control. They really need it for the split side. They really want to be able to abuse that verticality, but that's where things started to go wrong, John. They didn't do anything about the extension over into Archives and over into that Teller space. Archives, a little bit more work for them there. Obviously, the verticality is a little easier to actually muster in that 
space. But when it came to the actual teller space, they had no coverage at all. And that's how Dream got away with so much there. You have no information on anybody inside of that room. And he's allowed to make a lot of money moves that ends up just pushing them to the limit. Parabellum really tries to centralize around that white staircase and win the fight inside of the elevator hallway. But it's all for naught. Nyx especially making some very, very strong moves to actually support his teammate that's locked up inside of the elevator in that moment as well as Parabellum tries to bring in those reinforcements to assist. So I think Mirage is playing this out quite well, but we're going to have to continue to see them achieve this on different sites. And it all starts upstairs. All right, so let's get into it. This is going to be a second floor hold coming out next from Mirage here. For Parabellum, to take a look at them. Seen in the past, specifically was watching the games we saw closer to the qualifier. Here's some great harassment coming out from them on the outside. Repel and should be a sure assumption that we'll see more of that coming in immediately. Obviously, to play into the upstairs site here is it's quite a pivotal position and one that defenders can't punish so easily. So you're going to see quite a few castle barricades, at least one there on the left side over towards our B site that is going to be trying to stop that pressure from boiling in. You know, methods will be brought in as well, such as this nice setup you're seeing for Thomas as well as Dream on the inside of Janitor to fend off some of that repel pressure as well, should Parabellum try to go for it. Well, Parabellum now out and on to the map. Only 20 seconds down inside of the action phase thus far. Still a lot to do, though, across the board as Esco will be working his way to the north side of the building to more than likely hop on Repel. Though the rest of Parabellum on drones for a time being. They want to make sure that no one is going to try and harass him as they try and get these entries. You know, Parabellum might be a team that plays fast. That's what everyone knows them for. But in order to play quickly, you have to have that intel to make things work. Otherwise, it's pretty easy to get caught off guard. So Parabellum early on really, really has to lean into that before these big moves can come out and sometimes it even happens in prep phase with a couple of those drones sneaking their way into the building so that Parabellum can act on info quickly. But now with a minute off the board Parabellum just going about things in uh, very regular fashion. This is about as basic in bones as it gets for oh. any... Oh my goodness gracious Benji with a read of a lifetime. He'll take down Melted and guys that is quite the important utility. Absolutely the case. A great elimination coming in there as they're going to knock out the hard breach. Thankfully, do have two other forms of it coming in here for the Parabellum side of things there. Even aside from that, we'll continue to see the pressure boil in for Parabellum as they quickly exchange that kill out by taking down Thomas. Oh. And suddenly, two more fall to the ground as well. I believe still close to the stocks positioning as now Spirits has moved in. Two more dead for Mirage, having only Dream and Loading in the fight here, suddenly having to scramble to cover multiple positions after they were assuredly safe just a few moments prior. But this is no longer the case. Parabellum going to continue to try and hunt these last few players down, but Dream will cause problems again as he's able to find a trade on a Penguin to bring this down to a 3v2. This is a huge issue here. Dream with yet another here, and we were telling you guys about this player. If he pops off today, Parabellum is going to have some problems, even for them. Currently, though, case down to the top of Square. It'll be picked up here by Kool-Aid. Has Eska as well at full HP, and that's going to be necessary in order to actually achieve anything in this moment. Dream with a little bit of damage dealt to him, but don't have to call back on to. With 40 seconds remaining, though, Parabellum have some time to actually gather some intel, but we'll have to see what they want to do. With the positioning currently on the north windows, is, is it going to play out exactly safe? Somebody's got to swing in here and try and get this plant, and they're going to have information on this as well. And with Dream in this position, this more than likely means that Mirage can take it, but that doesn't mean that Parabellum can't gun back. You can see the info already starting to pour in right now, but loading, setting up for the cross here on Banana. 15 seconds, dwindling down here. Somebody's got to swing, and it happens now, but the Maverick not covering and that, more than likely, should be all she wrote. But no, no Eska, he'll be able to get it, but now the time being played, Dream jumps downstairs, Eska's not gonna grab the case, he won't even attempt the plant, not enough time. Be 0-0, zero, zero, as, oh, actually, Mirage will be able to run back upstairs. Apologies about that, folks, we'll still be able yeah, to find him. It's just been a minute since you and I got to cast some Siege, so I forgot that there was a 0-0 zero, zero timer for a second. <laughs> Look at me go. <laughs> so that's gonna work out quite well in the retake. There's some chaotic situations being presented to Mirage, but still able to control it. Once again, Dream is the one coming in there, picking up some very important kills to make sure that that does indeed happen. And the team is able to trade things back as Dream yet to die here in these first two rounds as well. I believe he's up 7-0 at this point in the game.
insanely impressive stuff from him, especially inside of these two initial rounds. He's playing every situation to the fullest, and I think that's the biggest deal right now for him, situationally speaking. Uh, especially when he's playing upstairs, he's just constantly playing around that mirror window, and usually when your position's known like that, it's very difficult to achieve the things that he is doing. So it's pretty awesome to see thus far for Mirage, especially in a map like Bank, up against a team like Parabellum. So we'll see if Parabellum can right this ship as they're currently down 0-2, and we'll be heading to basement for the very next defense. An interesting pick coming out there from Kool-Aid. Obviously, we're going to see the Osa come into play for this. Supposed to be the first time I'm getting to check things out in comp play. So we'll be curious to see how this works out, specifically against a basement push as well. So keep close eye on that as Parabellum gets much closer to entering the building for themselves. Mirage, at the same time, is going to bring something more akin to what we would expect here for the basement defense itself with a little bit of a wrinkle thrown in there. The Thunderbird specifically going to be coming in there, adding those Kona stations, and once again, allowing for the aggression to continue to roll out here for Mirage. That's a big proponent of how they've been able to continuously slow down the attacking pace from Parabellum, and at least the last round there, bleed it out to an even 2v2 where they were able to trade it at the final seconds of the round. I mean, just look at this labyrinth that Parabellum actually have to work around on this mid floor. You've got castle barricades, regular barricades, rotations across the entire thing. The entire kitchen wall is open for square as well. So if anybody actually wants to work that hatch and hold that for post plant, they actually have to contest the kitchen door constantly or more than oh. likely get taken out. I don't exactly know how an M590 did that, guys. <gasps> Excuse but, me? I mean, hey, it is what it is. Oh, he's literally challenging them in dirt. You absolute madman. Oh uh. my goodness gracious. Dream, you're 8-0, no, dude. Just calm down. He's already got Kool-Aid. We're not going to be able to see Osa this round. Yeah, she but... wasn't really worth her shield. Probably should have had that out. But. I was about to say, so much for the Osa pick. As, uh, that's immediately going to get shut down just 15 seconds into the action phase there. As like you said, Thomas will, or excuse me, not Thomas, will see Dream take up a direct position against the push from Kool-Aid and the rest of Parabellum there, shutting them out before they even get a chance to work their way in. We have scrim energy on the broadcast, and I, I love to see it, guys. If that's not the way that you're playing your competitive games, then I don't want it. That's, that's just how it is. Speaking, though, Thomas. Back down here inside of the lobby space, actually inside of archives, this cardiac sensor working out wonders for him as he'll be able to see the sledge, but I believe that nitro cell is going to go wide. Thomas will just sit on it for a time, but not able to get anything done with it. That's good, getting some hot pings down low. He'll see the positioning for just a moment, but not actually be able to capitalize on it. Things will continue to go well for Mirage here as they have delayed out a lot of the control using about half the round. That doesn't mean that Parabellum is out of the fight entirely yet here either, even from a 4v5. This is still in a position where they can come back from it with Spirits taking that big chunk of damage. It's certainly going to hurt their odds as they fend off another aggressive attempt to take control. No pressure, at least at this point, being deployed towards those blue stairs. You could see they are working on it, but they've yet to force the pressure in to push the player back down into server or even further into the site as of yet. And they're getting low on time to properly facilitate that they might have to get aggressive here just to get the spacing that they need to get into the site. Oh, Dream fantastic. blinded by that flash. No supporting utility to keep him alive there. Penguin walks right in. Picks up the first trade here for Parabellum and is going to immediately start looking for more as well as the hard breach on that sidewall to get them access to security. Beautifully done, and especially for Parabellum's case, Mirage doesn't have any utility to fight back anymore. They have a singular impact. It's going to come down to these guns trying to prevent Parabellum from getting this plant down. And you can see they're already set up around this area. Spirits will be holding the top hatch here, manning those doors, but Benji with a massive move. He's all the way upstairs already, and so is Loading. He's got the rotation cut off. He'll win it as well as Spirits is taken down, and now Parabellum have to worry about the flank. Nyx gets taken down by Eska, though, but we still have Benji on the way. Plant starting to go down. They have to cover this flank here as Esther works his way in. And oh, I mean, Benji, what's going on with this situation? Thomas will get one, but Thomas is now the only man alive as well, but he's prevented the plant. The case is down. He's able to find Melton, but Melton knows his positioning. The AK-12, too powerful, but it's actually a trade back and forth. A perfect push here from Parabellum gets them their first round. Some good patience coming in there from Parabellum with the final kill as well to make sure they set up that 2v1 instead of just gambling it on a 50-50 over the hatch there. Nicely done. We've seen some very, very close shaves with Parabellum, making sure that they secure that one without any risk of losing it to a clutch from Thomas. They finally go on the board of the basement attack, and now we'll see Mirage return to open area where we have seen some success before. I'll be honest, I absolutely loved Benji's hop off the top of Square. That was, that was like, <laughs> just a <laughs> was little so, bit off on the timing. He was it, so ready to man that hatch, man. Just jumps right down to the base floor, tries to get some things done, but just not prepared for Parabellum to try and rotate back in. But, I, I mean, that's just one of those situations that it, it's the little things, right? You have that kill happen across the map, so they know that something's up. They're going to try and rotate back, and, you know, it is what it is. Parabellum able to get their first round on the board on offense, but they need to muster quite a few more before they're out of the woods. So things continuing to look 
accountable here for the Parabellum roster. It's a nice comeback inside of that previous round as well, considering they lost the initial trade and were able to still control things after that very chaotic mid-round fight and bring it down into their favor by the end of the round here. So once again, we're returning to where Mirage has already found success for themselves, where Parabellum struggled quite a bit here to be able to isolate out that extended pressure, specifically from Dream over towards Archives, and then he would later rotate up the stairs to play on the inside, I believe a projector as well there. So some great stuff from him, and he was really the single player that stopped Parabellum from having success on this last attack. So we're going to see if he can be as much of an obstacle this time around, or if once again Parabellum are going to be ready to handle it this time. It's been a Herculean effort for sure from Dream thus far. Even in that last round, really throwing them off their game with that initial push into dirt and able to secure that kill with a shotgun. But the rest of Mirage just isn't here to support Dream right now. And that's where the wheels could fall off this wagon. For Mirage, they really need to stand tall across the board. Dream cannot get this all done himself, although he's been able to muster two rounds with the team so far. So, I mean, might take the wind out of my sails later on. We'll have to see. Parabellum, they'll be able to get some intel early on here. Cool late actually running the PDW instead of the C7E. Still a fantastic weapon, but just something to notate. Got some extra bullets to be able to send down range. So that scan is going to end up finding the position of Thomas. They're going to probably rotate him further into the site. Nyx is still near the stairs as well. They were keeping some heavy presence here on the last defense. That's not going to be too surprising to see that being doubled down on once again as Parabellum also threw quite a bit of aggression in that direction. Speaking of aggression from Parabellum, they once again reached that same phase of the round where they are able to start sledging out the area above Archives as well as Tellers to figure out the position of Dream. Hopefully force oh, him out and go. there you go. Not even going to need the sledge this time. Kool-Aid with an earlier hole is able to find out Dream, knocking him down as the first kill this round, and a big one at that for Parabellum. And that is huge. That is the one thing that got in the way of Parabellum on this site the last round. The oversight of Dream inside of Tellers, but this time, not so much. Parabellum makes the adjustment. Have they taken control of this space? Spirits currently occupying that, and can use a lot of utility in order to figure out the last positions of these players. Really nothing to get in his way of the Gemini either, so just see what they want to do. They still have so much time to be able to achieve a lot of this. Thomas with a pretty cheeky angle. angle, and can he get the frag? He cannot. Unfortunate for him, as the bomb chassis will eat some crucial shots, and Penguin will keep his life. It's apparently, though, as he goes to right around 40 or so for the rest of this round, and we're very cognizant to make sure that there's not going to be any tricks up the remaining members of Mirage's sleep, specifically over there towards that blue stairs position. Thankfully, Kool-Aid has that well defended from down below, so not going to be too much of a concern. As we do enter, however, the final 45 seconds, time will start to become a bit of a concern for the Parabellum roster as they're quickly running out of its spirits. Already trying to take another fight over here towards the elevator banks, but Nyx is going to win the most recent one. Eska quick to trade that, though, and bring us back down into an advantageous position for Parabellum as they enter a 4v3, but that's not going to be too much longer before we see Melted also knocked out. Remember, Eska heavily injured from a previous fight as well, so he's now down to just a sliver of HP here. And Parabellum suddenly worse for wear as they have to make an even fight, a 3v3 push into this site with only 20 seconds remaining here. Loading picks up the first kill of those remaining three as well by knocking out Spirits, but another exchange immediately works its way in. Eska completes the wrap, and it's going to look to shut this play down as they've got a 2v1 pinch that Thomas can't control, and Kool-Aid shuts it out once again here for Parabellum. Okay. I, I was waiting to see the top of his head over in the corner, but apparently they just found him off drone intel right there, able to shoot him through the uh, cubicles. So Parabellum tie things up. As well, it seems like these sites are starting to work against Mirage. We're not seeing any adjustments come across the board, and that's actually quite the big deal. Dream's still able to get away with a lot there, especially given his positioning. I love how he played it out against Yana in that situation. Instead of just taking the heads-up gunfight, he backs it off and forces Spirits to clear that entire space, and he ends up losing that gunfight on the stairwell instead. So very well done for him, especially with the omp of all guns, right? Uh, but for Parabellum, they're, el they're still able to come back in very convincing fashion, which was pretty incredible, especially given those circumstances. They have to actually funnel in through Kitchen, as well as the opposite side, but they're still able to win such crucial gunfights up against Mirage that the body count just isn't in the defensive favor, so they're able to take the win. This is where the real problems are going to start for Mirage here. It's now Parabellum has read into the strategy, obviously, on the first go-round of sites. We're just repeating them at this point, and the overall setups are going to remain relatively the same with a few operator changes. Nick specifically now going over to the Clash for the second attempt upstairs to try and slow down the play from Parabellum as they were eventually able to bring this down to a 2v2 and end up just catching the last player from Parabellum at a zero timer trying to plant it. That was Dream once again that's able to do that. But obviously, as you guys have probably noticed by this point, Parabellum is 
certainly realize that Dream is a big part of the issue in terms of their attacks being successful. So they are focusing a lot of their efforts on making sure that he goes down without putting up much of a fight. And unfortunately, as of yet, we have not really seen any of the other members of Mirage step up to try and take some of that heat away from Dream. We'll have to see if they can get it going here on the defensive side. As you said, it's mostly been the Dream Show. He's going to be switching things up over to the Maestro instead of rocking the Mira like he did the previous round. Also have some d different defensive standpoints like you were talking about with the Clash or the Warden here as well. So some tidbits to actually be able to fight back against Parabellum, especially if they start to pour utility into the actual site. So I'll have to see how this one breaks down. I really like the setup they have going on here with uh, Benji and Nyx inside of the hallway. Benji can also man stock to make sure that nobody can hop in and shoot Nyx in the back. So so there's a lot of positives right now for this defensive setup. I'll we'll have to see if Parabellum, though, can try and fix things up. The last time we saw the case go down outside, and in the dying moments, we see the rappel from Parabellum on the north side of the building trying to work the windows, and that's not exactly where you want to be inside of a 2v2 in the dying moments trying to get a case down, swinging into the building. So we'll have to see in these last two minutes what they can possibly achieve. Benji already trying to keep a close eye out for the pressure that might be working its way in, in this pivotal hallway between Stotts as well as the main square hall here. Nick's already taking a few bullets as he tries to block this one off in as active a way as possible. And Spirit's going to go for a little bit of an explosion from below here. Unfortunately, going to be way off the mark to anyone on the Mirage roster. So no success in netting any damage, but it will expose a floor position. We are seeing quite a few other members of Mirage try to play into, specifically in the late round as well. So that could still become useful to Parabellum later on here. Either way, great job so far for Mirage in terms of delaying things out. Not a whole lot gained. That is, oh no! Oh! What? Spirit's going to be able to land that nade to take out Nyx and at the same time react quickly enough to find Benji as well. Beautiful stuff from Parabellum. And it just keeps rolling as Eska is now going to be able to take out Thomas as well. Suddenly bringing this down to a 5v2. Might be a 4v2 in a second as Penguin was at least down, but at the same time, a good possibility considering his position that he might just get picked back up. Dream has got to get away with murder here, folks, and loading with the assist as well. It's a 2v2. They don't have time to get Penguin up either. No one's in position in order to do this. kool would have to swing inside, and not only that, he still needs to get the case as well. 45 seconds here for Parabellum to get something done, and it looks like we're going to be constantly locked into these 2v2 engagements, and personally, John, I am in love with this. This is so much fun right now. Kool-Aid. We'll try and get some extra information off of this Twitch drone. Hops inside a CEO, but you can see the hot marks coming in through the walls are rather yellow pings that are reading out the current situation of the defense. Parabellum trying to capitalize on that. Sees one inside of the elevator hallway, but yeah, the shot's going wide with the F2. A little bit more difficult to use nowadays, and just enough recoil to mess up those shots. As Parabellum getting low on time now, they have to try and surge forward, but the Evil Eye's dealing some damage to the planner. He finally gets in behind and able to try and stick this. Kool-Aid down to a lone man, but he's been hot Mark. He kills one. He'll get off, and it's up to Dream, who will achieve greatness yet again. He knows where the plant's going he's not down. Gonna give him the kool aid kill. doesn't want to give up another frag, and Dream, I mean. I mean, oh my. What do you say, man? Another double kill coming out from him, leading the charge. Now in double digits, hit his 10th frag right there as well. We're not even done with the first half yet. He's like the modern day Jack the Ripper, <laughs> dude. He's just getting away with everything right now. It's actually incredible, especially up against a team like Parabellum. I mean, for the folks at home, I'm sure you guys are seeing the amount of information that Parabellum's getting inside of these sites. They know where Dream is, but he's still winning these engagements. This shouldn't happen that often, but it is. It's been fantastic to see Mirage play in such a way, but you have got to give it up to Dream and what he's been able to accomplish thus far on this bank. Even if Parabellum take this bank, this has got to be one of the best maps I've seen Dream play. Yeah, absolutely the case here. We again talked about the fact that he was once again one of the brightest stars of this team in terms of consistency back during the NAL season. He's once again showing us why that is the case here with some absolutely amazing impactful performance. 10-2-0. He doesn't mm -hmm. need assists. He doesn't need <laughs> anyone to help. <laughs> No help needed. Absolutely not the case. He finishes all his kills on his own. Unfortunately, can't necessarily say the same for the rest of the roster as of yet. We've been seeing flips and flops from them every once in a while. They have not been able to pick up any huge rounds themselves. And most of the heroics, if not all of the heroics that we've been seeing from Mirage, have been coming from that man on your top right, Dream. Luckily enough, though, the rest of his team is starting to support him in a lot of these situations, which is great to see if you are rooting for Mirage in this situation. Now, something that we need to highlight because we are in this situation in between these two, but neither you or I knew how this best of three was going to play out. Just to remind you guys, if you guys are just tuning in, whoever loses this best of three, this is map one, whoever loses this best of three goes home.
They are not going to SI. There is no go past jail. Don't collect $200. You just have to sit in your bedroom and cry. And nobody wants that for anyone here. Uh, all except for Nyx, who's trying to send him home just a little bit faster. It's a cap can. Who cares? Can he win the second engagement? He can't. Esco will get a free kill, but all for the price of Kool-Aid. So that is going That's to be... That's pretty cheap, by the way. It's like 99 cents. <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be a bit of a cheeky start coming out there from Nyx as he hops out the window, just confirms the 4v4. We have been seeing a lot of these 2v2s come down to the wires, so maybe Barrage is just feeling that they have the advantage when they get into that situation, which I'm pretty sure they norm. if I'm remembering all these rounds correctly, I'm pretty sure they have ended up winning the large majority of those kind of close situations that we've came down to, and mainly because of the time and the fact that Parabellum is playing just a tad too slow to allow those rounds to go to that sort of status so often. If we're remembering our stats correctly from Stage 3, I do believe that Mirage actually has the most 1vx situations won, uh, just because of the way that a lot of their rounds ended up breaking down during uh, that stage. So, uh, either way though, Mirage overall have that clutch factor, especially for Dream, as they've been able to fight back time and time again thus far here on Bank. But this will be the last defensive round for Mirage, and obviously that means the last offensive round for Parabellum. So they're going to be taking in this top floor, all except for Spirits, who's currently working his way in towards Teller's office. Has a teller space already. Nade down. Has an extra one, but no more information available to him. He's going to have to get somebody else to drone this space. And now they found Loading, who's going to continue to get crunched on, but this is more of just like Tiramisu. It's coming in from every single side, man. He's got it on all corners. Ice cream sandwich, more like, but oh, finally good. getting hot mark. Loading's going to be able to make it out. They had every angle on this man possible. Matrix is his way through everything and gets a drone for his pleasure. Eska, so unfortunate the pressure that was being put onto those players downstairs like loading saved his life as they weren't able to focus on that pre-placed nitro that had gone down upstairs but at the same time he's not able to catch those players when the opportunity is presented to him here as loading with just a sliver of hp makes it out and back to the depths of the site and open here 43 seconds left is what we we're talking about before as Parabellum still needs to set up a lot of their positioning here to get closer to the site, but they are indeed very close to it. As you can see, Eska possibly ready to hop into the break room window. The rest of the team starting to build up mass over here towards Tellers and the main stair landing. They're going to send the clone in to try and see the initial intel, get the position of loading just behind that hatch. It's not enough, so they'll have to use drones as well, but getting low on time, that pivotal 20 second mark is approaching, and now they have to go in. And this is when things get dicey for both squads. Nades in, smokes in, the whole shebang. They've been able to find Castle in the corner, but Loading will finally go down. Somebody has to plant this case, and it'll be Penguin in the back corner, with the shots finally coming through. It's up to Dream, but he's not able to win out against Melted. Parabellum tie it up on the offensive side. Parabellum, I didn't think they could do it there. It was a tense fight, but they're able to, at least in one player's case, hot drop down through a hatch. A few more pushing in from the main stairs landing as well. It's enough pressure built up from those drones as well as the Yana clone that had gone in a few seconds prior, and they are able to control the chaos and come out on top of a very tough gunfight. Hey, Tachanka hates a coward, man. Just throw <laughs> yourself in there. Try and get something going because sometimes it works out like this, John. You might not think a hot drop through a hatch is going to work against a professional NAL team, but sometimes you make a scoreline 3-3 on bank, and then you got to switch sides. So, Parabellum able to bring it back from the depths. It was getting scary there for just a moment, especially with how much rope they were giving Dream. But we'll have to see now that they switch sides. Obviously, Mirage will be on the favored side in the moment, but it looks like these teams are ready to clash. That's the uh, the kind of interesting part I've been noticing about a lot of the CL teams we've been seeing play, like the relegation matches. This is a little bit of a thing for one shot as well. As they're not afraid to try like fairly bold things that normally just flatline at higher tier games here. But as we're seeing is the case, because of the fact that our more seasoned teams like Mirage are not necessarily expecting those types of plays, they're, they're working out those one or two times they try to go for them. They just can't make a habit of it, unfortunately. It becomes a bit too predictable. I would love to pose a question to you. Yeah. If it works, is it still stupid? No. See, that's 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 well, how it is. I mean, yes, but also, <laughs> I would argue, I would argue it, could, it could still be dumb. Yes, yes, you're right. <laughs> but I wouldn't call it stupid. That's another tier up at that point. Yes, exactly. You got you got to get the tier list going. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I would completely agree. It's just one of those things where you know, three years ago, somebody just bum rushing in with all of their utility in hand and that kind of stuff. Like, what's really going on? But you know, I think as as siege has progressed and that kind of stuff, people have realized how valuable every single life is across the board, and they've started to play a lot more around that. And if I do frag you 
you and it is the right person, I mean, even if it's the wrong person, still, you're down a gun in Siege. That's not very fun. But if it's the right person, I kill your Hard Breach, I kill somebody that you need to actually get access to the site. Your round's basically shot unless you do something extremely drastic. So I, I honestly have been a big fan of the way that the game's been played recently, especially with Parabellum's take uh, you know, on how, you know, how the current meta looks and just how they operate with their team in general. So obviously the half is closed out now. Moving on to the second half with Parabellum on their defensive side. They're going to take their initial round down towards the basement here. Something we were talking about before, again, uh, Sight the Mirage did not feel too, too confident to try and play into there, even though it worked out very good for themselves. They kept it much, much later on in the rotation. Meanwhile, Parabellum's going to dive directly into it as it leads into a very, very straightforward style of play here, one that they don't have to play into too many variables for here, one that ultimately, as you can see here, they can much more easily control. It's just this kind of L control they're going for over towards Square, leading into open air, and then back over towards the main stairs. And aside from that, everyone else is being kept very close to a rotate point or already inside of the basement. That's just such a rude way to shut down the bottom of Square. Have Smoke play blue and then just have an entire Mira set up inside of Kitchen with a man manning it. Really no way for them to clear that out from upstairs. They have to try and deal with this laterally, so we'll have to see what they're able to do. You can see Penguin also manning this space as well. This hatch more than likely opened up as a safe avenue to try and rotate back, but obviously Mirage have read into this. Benji with a very big kill here onto Spirits, but is immediately traded back by Kool-Aid on blue stairs. So that engagement actually works out in favor of the defense, at least for the time being, as they'll take down some pretty important utility here in the likes of Benji, but that doesn't mean that Mirage can't get away with the rest of this round. Cool, he's going to take a lot of heat there, I believe, coming in from the site, or Red Hall Hatch, as once again, he's going to have some trouble locating the source of it himself. But regardless, we'll be able to survive, we'll not take the brunt of damage needed to go down, so about 50 HP can live to fight another frag here, as once again, teams are going to get a dead heat as we come down to the last minute in a 4v4, both looking to try and control this round, as well as the opening lead lead for the second half here as both teams were at each other's necks the entire time trading rounds like crazy inside of the first half here despite not a single plant going down for Parabellum over the course of their attack as well still oh, to negotiate man. three rounds what an angle here for Dream as well just barely catches Penguin on top of that cash case able to take him down and slowly the numbers are starting to favor Mirage more and more but the time that's starting to favor oh. Parabellum and the numbers might go their way soon too as Eska gets his next kill here by taking out one of the members of Mirage and followed up quickly by Dream Melted that's not even going to be a problem for him. Nyx just walks right into his crosshair. Oh. Loney will get an exchange to bring it down to a 1v2, but he's got a lot of work to do from a very back position, and unfortunately, a lot of players to take down. Kool-Aid trades him out, and it's Parabellum to take control of their initial round on defense. I mean, Kool-Aid's got to be the star of the show on that one. You know, able to get that kill on blue, comes back in, able to play around the gold vault area and assist in that as well. Fantastic moves, though, across the board from Parabellum and what they were able to actually get done downstairs, and that's what I was really worried about when it came to Mirage instead of that mid round is are they actually going to be able to get into sight in the way that they wanted to and we know the answer now the answer is no they actually have to try and push down the stairwell drop into the elevator all of it just goes so terribly wrong and loading is actually the only one that gets through the net while everyone's captured all right, so taking us into our second defensive round here, coming in for Parabellum. They're going to head over towards open area next. We already saw them controlling open area for a large portion of that previous round, so it's not going to be too much of a surprise. They now go directly to that site where they can just play into a very similar setup, or at least part of it, to try and defend the site itself here. Away from that, though, we are going to see much more heavy reinforcements to fend off the pressure towards Square. Don't want to let their opponents have free fire directly into open area, as well as, once again, more than likely playing into that setup that allows them to take control towards the landing of the first floor by main stairs. Well, we will have quite the interesting pick coming out for Parabellum here as Oryx will make his way onto the field, but not for the first time today. We've already seen him a couple of times, but definitely a pretty great map for him, to be honest with you. You have hashes that trans, uh, transfer to every single floor and quite a few of them at that, so makes it to uh, be quite the great map for Oryx at the end of the day. Still has quite a good gun now, so we'll have to see what Spirits is able to get done with that, but just bringing the proxies as the secondary. And obviously, always a good time to watch Oryx dash through some walls and stuff like that. It's just, it's just comedic value you at this point. It's it's pretty great. We've got the Echo coming in here for Kool-Aid as well, so some nice additional intel coming out for the team, as well as that clutch capability to try and stop a plan if it comes down to the wire, which we were seeing quite a bit inside of the first half there, although Parabellum takes solid control in the first round and finally moves us away from that narrative, however slightly. Loading is going to be the first to move in for his team here as Mirage starts to fend out a bit of their aggression. He'll take the initial control over here towards server in the basement, and he's going to be getting a ping, I think, towards some utility or possibly a player upstairs. Either way, he will need to move away from this position. There's not going to be a whole lot in terms of being able to shoot through the walls inside of this room. 
don't exactly know what they would have inside of that space and you know in comparison to what is up on that next floor it might be no nah, no nah, i don't think that works out we'll have to see exactly where it is but the only thing it could possibly be is maybe pengu uh, penguin's electro claw but i haven't seen a spot like that it'd be more towards the back wall here for loading so that actually would end up lining up with those walls but might be in a different spot instead and it looks like it is i don't see anything over there in that corner but could have been a cheeky thing they just have to hold on to the space because obviously it'd be free for loading at that point and then it'd be a free wall into kitchen so Parabellum more than likely not down with that. We're going to see the Sam Cam start going down here for loading as well for the team to try and isolate out a few players of Mirage maybe closer to square but not going to find much there instead it's going to be Spirits to strike first here about halfway through the round taking out the most impactful player that we've seen so far this game for Mirage and Dream as he goes down still with a solid record at 12 to 5 but going to be unable to help out the squad in this round it comes down to the other four here to make up the difference now as they're coming in on their last minute but already starting to make some progress and opening up access to the staff at open areas as you're going to see here these Selmas blowing up starting to give them access to the small closet truly terrified for Mirage on this offensive side right now because obviously offense is a little more difficult to try and you know synergize with the rest of your team rather than what defense is and that's why we saw Dream able to pop off so much but now he's on the offensive side they really have to get this whole engine going at the same time and it's making things a little bit more difficult for them as no one's able to try and pick up the slack. Parabella well, was getting away with quite a bit and yeah, as you said with that Yokai drone out here that's going to be solid info for Spirits he'll be able to rotate into bottom square at any moment's notice, and they'll likely get a few more Mirage frags. I don't believe that any of the Echo Drones saw these guys just as of yet here, but that could be changing soon as it's left in position here. It's sitting right there in the corner, so Spirits definitely knows now. He's held back his aggression, but at the same time, Mirage is aware of his position too. Eska gets the next kill. Mirage now oh! down to three. Nyx going to be able to drop Spirits. It's nearly a trade, but not enough on to Nyx himself. Benji finds the next one for Mirage as they try to hold on with him being the only player left alive for the team. 15 seconds left. There's not really a palatable res here for Nick, so it's just him. He's got the hot ping on at least one of them here. Gonna throw in the concussive to try and see if he can make the wrap, but the confidence just isn't there. Even with Melted being fully stunned, he gets the first kill and the second, but he can't find the last player here. Penguin just hiding behind the case. He's gonna close it down instead, and a second defensive win comes out for Parabellum. Parabellum have got to be happy about Penguin's ideas there. Just get in behind the bomb chassis and hold on for dear life. There's no way that he can frag you out, and they're able to get yet another round. Five 5-3 in favor of Parabellum when they started down two rounds on the offensive side of Bank. It's been truly incredible to see this thus far, but guys, we still got a lot of map left in us, honestly. We could see Mirage come back here still. There's a whole breadth of things that could happen, but currently we're on a timeout. So once we get past that, we'll get back into game, but we can at least tell you this. Right now, the defense of Parabellum currently thinking about executive CEO, and uh, well, it looks like it's going to be their usual setup. We're going to have Eska on that Echo as well that a lot of people are really starting to, you know, bring that into the Parabellum scope is like, oh, dude, this Echo is so sick. And I'm a big fan of it as well. I've always been a big fan of Echo. Obviously, he fought, uh, fell off a little bit uh, in recent history with that nerf, but it's starting to come back in a big fashion, especially just to cross pro play in general. Really going to call it that nice blue stairs flank we saw in the last round as well. A great time wasting mechanism to come in there from Parabellum. As we saw there, their opponents, Mirage, getting very, very close to being able to just rush right into the site with a good minute or so left on the clock. That would have been a very dangerous time back for them to try and slowly inch their way in. And more than likely, in my opinion, would have led to an outright loss for Parabellum, but that nice switch up there to put the additional pressure on Blue acts as a distraction against Mirage. They got to spend a good 20, 30 seconds now clearing that player out. Even when they do, it's just an even trade at the end of the day, so it only further favors Parabellum as the numbers shift further and further into their favor to close it down in those final few seconds. Incredible stuff from them. Uh we need to see more from Mirage here, and that's across the board, folks. Dream really needs some help on this offensive side, although Benji has been able to step up to the plate in a certain sense, as he's currently 7-6, and six, but we'd like to see those numbers get bumped up just a little. Those are rookie numbers, man. we got to keep going here, looking for more frags and more impact across the board. So either way, Parabellum now on the defense are headed upstairs, as we were talking about before. And, well, it's going to be more of what we expected. We will have Pangu... Uh, uh, Pangu. The uh, Penguin on the Mira. Almost. Not, not Pangu. Yeah, very close to Pangu, <laughs> but... Uh, not nearly Same as animal. European. Not nearly as European. So Just spelled correctly. <laughs> yes, yes. No numbers. No gamer language. <laughs> So we'll uh, get ourselves into this next round here as Mirage is out on the board once again, of course, and is once again going to bring a lot of that roam hunting utility to be able to try and hunt out some of these more aggressive members from Parabellum. Hasn't necessarily been the uh, mainstay of how Parabellum's been finding success, though. They've been using a big mix of strategies to be able to put themselves ahead in these rounds, whether it's just a solid site setup, as we saw with their basement hold, or the roam game, as we saw in that previous round there with a nice rotate that came in towards the back blue stairs here. Either way, 
Mirage going to be spending this first minute or so as additional drone time to figure out where exactly the more hard lock setups are going to be from Parabell. And I don't believe there'll be any huge surprises. We've got the usual extended setup in a J currently being played by their Mira, as well as the additional emphasis on areas like the J hallway sitting outside here for Spirits and Penguin. Yeah, you can see, you know, the compare and contrast the differences between the two defensive setups. That area around stock is extremely important because you don't want the offense to have that early access to square, but you need some assistance around that space. What we saw from Mirage was the clash the second time. Initially, it was just that shield setup to try and play out into oh, that area. Wow. And, oh, man. That was a Kobe and a half. <laughs> Thomas from downtown. He'll take out one. But Nyx, he's still sticking this. They won't be able to stop it either. Mirage, they're just taking down Paramellum members like crazy. Melted and Kool-Aid. All of a sudden, the last two that remain. But Kool-Aid's gotten away with quite a bit today. And he'll continue to do so. Melted. Well, he gets melted. Down to one versus three here for Kool-Aid. But he's got a lot of work ahead of him. Nick's still out here on the rappel with Dream. Could possibly he beg two here. Does does he know the whole breadth of what's going on inside of this space? I believe it's more towards the Mirage side right now. Is are going to get some more information on this case? And this is more than likely a loss for the defense. Yeah, that was his chance right there for Kool-Aid. If he was able to catch that player that had hopped down here, you'll notice that Nyx hasn't even fully gone up just yet, just to be safe on that one so he doesn't give himself away. But either way, in a second here, he's going to run out of time as he has now. And this route will go over to Mirage. Some great support on the plant coming in there as they force the issue with smoke. So other forms of utility to get themselves in the site with no time wasted. Finally changing up the game plan and finally yielding some success for this team on the attacking half as well. Yeah, huge frag from Tommy there especially. That really, really needed to come in on that back end to try and pull Parabellum to the dude, uh, two different ends of the site. If you don't have that there, Parabellum is able to answer way too quickly. There's no way that you're going to get that case down. So, fantastic stuff here from Mirage to be able to bag that round and draw this one step closer to either overtime or taking this outright if they don't give up Parabellum another round. Yep, absolutely the case here. Parabellum definitely still in control of things and certainly going to be the case now that we start to rotate back to the previously won sites for them. This is now the time to see adjustments come in from Mirage. Have they learned the proper lessons as to why they were not able to take control of these sites initially? And are they going to be able to properly translate that to forces into overtime or an outright victory, as you were mentioning, if they can translate the next three rounds for themselves here? Let's get into it as we are not going to see a who Actually, no, we are going to see the Tachanka run this time for Melton. Is able to waste a bit more time with those incendiaries? And that should work quite well due to the way that Mirage played the XQ previously. Well, if you guys remember about 12 hours ago, you will remember that Parabellum played this setup against TSM with the Tachanka, which uh, was quite funny because I was uh, standing with my girlfriend and she was like, wait, why isn't Tachanka taking his turret out? And I was like, oh no. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while for her. So, but actually has those incendiaries instead. And it's actually going to be a pretty interesting setup for Parabellum because they have the smoke as well. There's so yep. much denial here for the plant. And that's what I really, really like about this. Now, the biggest issue that they had up against TSM is TSM overwhelmed the setup. There was really no way for them to try and fight back, especially with what we saw TSM bring to the table inside of those rounds. When you have two LMGs firing at you that are dr adrenal surged and you kind of just can't fight that situation, uh, it's pretty difficult to try and win out. So give them the benefit of the doubt on that one. Hopefully this defensive round shows us a little bit more. Loading going to waste no time, taking that initial control over here towards the front lobby of the building itself. Thomas obviously assisting on that with his own drone here. So we're going to see both of them fully check this out just to make sure there's no one hiding in the corners here for Parabellum. It would be very strange if that was the case, but not going to catch anyone this time as Parabellum actually have a much more close to the chest setup. They haven't gone for that extended L setup over here towards Square and then wrapping towards the main stairs around the back open area of the building. This is much more of your just turtle bunker defense setup inside itself. They want to waste time downstairs. Mirage will have free reign over the second and the first floor of this map and they ultimately have to spend the large majority of that time bank clearing out the utility as well as the bunkers themselves here further into the basement itself. Yeah, mostly due to the utility that we see Parabellum bringing in the current moment. They don't really want to give up anyone. The only one that you could see make some super risky plays happen is more than likely Kool-Aid just because all of his utility is down. For Eska, he's still got that secondary nitro cell that he's more than likely going to want to try and use for denial if everything else runs out. So, as you said, this is a pretty close to the chest setup for Parabellum but Mirage have to recognize that because now they have to hit this on time. If they do not, they won't have enough time to clear out a lot of this utility, and that could lead to Parabellum dwindling this timer, forcing Mirage to funnel and actually get frags instead of trying to focus on that plant. Penguin's actually going to push himself forward here. He's going to be playing inside of server as the Electro Claw will lock up the hatch, so Mirage will have to try and force their way down blue or try and reposition to another space. We could see somebody try and hop out the top square window and go for dirt just to get more of a two-prong attack on this, but as of right now, it's just the blue door. There won't be any direct contest on the blue stairs themselves. But as you were saying, the doors where things are going to get a little bit more interesting because the sidewall has been left soft. You can see spirits hiding out on the inside there constantly. 
threatening presence here. The nade's gonna go in, but it's actually gonna blow up way too early. It doesn't even make it uh -oh. over towards the back of the server banks. Penguin as well. Gonna chuck in his first smoke charge. Second, excuse me here, as he's actually used a previous one earlier on in the round here. But anyway, it's gonna fend off the dirt tunnel play. Benji is looking for the capability to wrap around, but he knows he has this very tight angle against the smoke, and that's a bit of a risk if he were to go for that. So holds back, rotates back up the stairs. It seems like a different plan, maybe in the cards here for Mirage as they come up on their last 30 seconds or so. Mirage has done such a good job of trying to bear down on the site, but it's been Parabellum that have stood so tall against this. I like what we've seen from the offense, but the defense just outclassing them in every single way. They're going to have to go for the hot drop inside of Elevator. Benji with a lot to do. We'll have to see how far they can get, and it all starts with a sea of blue in the kill feed. Parabellum taking it to Mirage. They want their sixth round. They know someone's locked in the elevator, but where's the last man? We'll have to see exactly what they can get away with. It's a nitro sell out to kill Benji, and Penguin rotates all the way upstairs, <laughs> drops down the hatch, and says, hey man, I got a Mossberg. What's good? Checks the crouch key while he's in the midst of it as well there. So some nice stuff. This is full control for Parabellum all throughout that round there. I don't think Mirage, except for the actual drop going into the elevators there at the end, got a single player into the vicinity of basement safely. So a solid defense put up by them. And that's a completely different strategy from what we saw in their previous basement play as well. So a lot of variety coming out on that specific site for Parabellum, causing, as you guys saw, some serious problems for Mirage on trying to get into that site in a timely manner. I think the biggest thing right there is Thomas had to hit that frag grenade. If he hits that frag grenade, that's a completely different round for Mirage. But that's how Siege works, man. It's all down to those little details. If they're able to kill that smoke, they take control of the server, and they more than likely are able to try and work around the plant that they initially wanted. But they had to cancel that, given the situation. Way too much damage done to Thomas. He can't try and challenge smoke anymore. Any of those toxic babes kill him. So they have to try and back out instead and go for that hatch drop. So unfortunate for Mirage, but they still have two more chances to try and make it to overtime before Parabellum takes this map. Well, let's see if they can get things done here. As we are going to go to a little bit more of an exposed site as we head towards open area for what very well could be the final round of the opening map of this series. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, only the first map of the series you can see from our notches at the top. So we'll potentially two more coming for you to round out the night. And so obviously these teams are fighting for survival right now. They want to play this out to their heart's content as they still want that chance to go to SI. And unfortunately, the road's going to come to a close here if they're not able to come out on top of this matchup. You know what? I'm not even mad that we had to wait like 10 hours to cast. This is actually <laughs> fantastic. I'm so happy that we were able to get this up and make sure that you guys have a broadcast because otherwise you're you guys are going to have to go, like, watch this on YouTube or something like that. We all want to sit in the chat and yell at things together. It's just way more fun that way. So fantastic that we've been able to get this bank out and to open your guys' eyes and see what's going on. It's pretty great. But either way, though, Parabellum looking to take this in 7-4 fashion. This will be starting things off here on that defensive side still. Too much to call home about in comparison to what they did the last time. We're going to have uh, Spirits back on the Oryx, so we'll see if he can get anything done here as he'll be operating around this top floor. Penguin also with the assist. Would find a hole in the door, and if he steps up far enough... Oh, no. Unfortunate dream. Oh, he's able to get it! I thought he was still on drone. I was so terrified for this man, but able to actually keep his life and also take away the Nitro option from Penguin. Bit aggressive there from Penguin as well as we're seeing Parabellum take again another very different strategy from what we had to see in the previous oh, round. What? This time they're being much more active and oh, Spirits no! over here towards the stock windows is actually going to be able to finally take out Dream as they fail to get up with the Nitro before. Kool Aid similarly is going to be able to catch Nyx also. So that's already two players down with just a small amount of damage traded on the Penguin to show for it. And this is what makes PB so scary is that inside of these opening moments they can just decide around just like that. It's down to three players here for Mirage, and the big issue right now is, well, they only have the secondary hard breach of loading. It's also going to be difficult for them to get that kitchen wall open given the circumstances, so it's more than likely going to be a funnel yet again here. But not only that, they need some serious, serious frags with no trades happening. And with how Parabellum has been playing so far, I don't exactly see that happening. That's uh, at least the second round that we've seen Dream get hard focused as the first target to be taken out here too. And we already know the reason why. He unfortunately has fallen off quite a bit from the performance we were seeing earlier on in this matchup. Still leading the charge for his team, but I think at some point from the middle of the half he had already hit that 10 kill mark, so he's only gotten three kills since then. As this has been a rough go of it for Mirage as they try to survive and hold on to pick up this first map. Thomas as well getting aggressive, oh. and it's going to work out for him. Oh. He gets not one, but a second against Spirits to even us back down into a 3v3. Kool-Aid 
got the angle for a trade, but he unleans too quickly. Eska instead is going to take out Benji and Kool-Aid will now assist, leaving it all on Thomas in a 1v2 here. He's up to a triple, though, with his most recent kill. Finally knocking out Penguin, but he's got a lot more to take out and not enough ammo to do it here. Kool-Aid shuts it down, and Parabellum takes the opening map on Bank. Incredible gameplay from Parabellum here on Bank, starting out 0-2 in favor of Mirage and able to bring it back to 7-4, not giving up a round in quite some time, especially when it came to their defensive side, which is 